Hello, my name is Sean Porter. I am a content developer for Juniper Networks in our Education Services Department. Today I will be discussing an introduction to Fiber Channel and Fiber Channel over Ethernet on the QFX 3500 switch. In essence, Fiber Channel allows the SCSI protocol to be tunneled over Fiber Channel storage area networks or SANs to huge network storage arrays. The host bus adapter or HBA takes a SCSI command and encapsulates it in a fiber channel packet and the fiber channel SAN delivers it to the storage array. The storage array has a built-in HBA that removes the fiber channel encapsulation and presents a raw SCSI command to the disk which then reads or writes data. Storage is very sensitive to packets and commands being sent and arriving in the correct order. The fiber channel protocol allows this to happen in much the same way TCP IP performs this function for IP networks. In addition, the fiber channel switches and directors are designed to deliver high bandwidth but avoid congestion and not drop packets, making the whole process faster and more reliable than Ethernet. Today, fiber channel runs at 8 gigabit per second maximum and 16 gigabit per second is currently in development. It may be helpful to compare local area networks or LANs and SANs side by side. In the lower layer, in the LAN world, we have gigabit Ethernet and 10 gigabit Ethernet speeds. In a SAN environment, we have speeds of up to 16 gig per second fiber channel as described on the previous slide. LAN packets have media access control or MAC and internet protocol or IP addresses. The SAN has similarly a worldwide name or WWN and fiber channel ID or FCID. In the LAN world we have port access control lists or port based ACLs. SANs also have the same type of thing with zone enforcement. Similarly open shortest path first or OSPF is used to calculate the best path to a destination in the LAN environment. SAN has fabric shortest path first or FSPF to find the best path to the storage device. In the upper layer, LANs have dynamic host configuration protocol or DHCP which maps to floggy or fabric login in the SAN environment. And domain name system or DNS equates to the fiber channel name server or NS. The terms are different but conceptually they're much the same. The fiber channel ID is the same concept as an IP address. While an IP address has four octets, FCID has three octets. It is made up of domain, area, and port fields. All parameters are configured on SAN fabric devices. The fiber channel fabric consists of various port types. Unlike Ethernet, each port has a different name and different function. For example, the host HBA is called the node port or N port. The fabric port or F port is the port of the fiber channel fabric which connects to the N port. If there is port connecting switch to switch it is called the extended port or E port in the SAN environment. We also need to discuss another nugget of information strictly for configuration of the QFX 3500 interface for our discussion purposes which is the NP port. The NP port connects to an F port and acts as a proxy for other N ports on the switch. Essentially, the N port looks like a host to the F port on the other end. It is very important to understand which port is performing what role. So far, we have provided an overview of the fiber channel protocol. The next topic is fiber channel over Ethernet or FCOE. Before we start FCOE, we need to understand one fundamental assumption in the fiber channel world. The input output or IO network has to be lossless. Neither fiber channel nor FCOE want packet loss. Since they are different from TCP IP, how can they achieve a lossless link 
without relying on TCP? Well, the answer is Fiber Channel has a built-in flow control mechanism. The sending and receiving hosts set a credit to know the extent of room they have to process the packet. These are two types of flow controls. One is node-to-node -node, and the other is buffer-to-buffer. -buffer. A node-to-node -node credit is the source and destination end port and it is end-to-end. -end. A buffer-to-buffer -buffer credit is the link connecting the end port to the F port. This will be discussed further when configuring the FC interface on the QFX 3500 switch in a little bit. We will now start with a very high level of FCOE. As Ethernet has been moving towards 10 gigabit, Ethernet is now on par with fiber channel interface speeds. Therefore, if one Ethernet could transport everything, it should make things simple rather than having separate connections for Ethernet and fiber channel. In the upper left hand portion of this slide, we have separate NICs for Ethernet and HBA. They are now combined and have become the CNA or converged network adapter. CNA makes everything simpler. Let's say a customer has four different types of connections. A storage connection, a network management connection, IP traffic, and other IP communications for an application. Once CNA is introduced, all the cables shown in the bottom will be replaced with one wire seen here on the right. That's a huge benefit and reduces total cost of ownership. For configuration flexibility, up to 36 of the QFX 3500 switches 48 pluggable SFP Plus ports can be used in 10 gigabit Ethernet or 1 gigabit Ethernet mode, with up to 18 of the 1 gigabit Ethernet ports being copper. The remaining 12 ports can be used to support 2, 4, or 8 gigabit per second fiber channel modes, as seen on the far left and the far right hand sides of this switch. When you have, when you configure FC interfaces on the QFX 3500, you must configure either 6 or 12 of the physical interfaces as native FC interfaces. Native FC interfaces connect the, connect to the FC SAN switch. You can configure port 0 through 5 as fiber channel interfaces and ports 42 through 47 to create blocks of native fiber channel interfaces. You cannot individually configure a single port as a native FC interface. With these port blocks you cannot mix FC interfaces with Ethernet interfaces and all ports in a block must be either native FC or Ethernet interfaces. To configure physical FC interfaces using the Junos command line interface, you must specify the physical port block you want to configure on the switch as native FC interfaces. To configure all 12 native FC interfaces, it requires two separate configuration statements. We will now exit the presentation and I will show you how to configure a native FC port block and a native and a native FC interface on the QFX 3500 switch. Remember, when you configure the QFX 3500 switch for fiber channel, you must configure either 6 or 12 of the physical interfaces as native FC interfaces. You can configure 6 native FC interfaces by configuring either ports XE0/0/0 through XE0 slash 0 slash 5 or XE0 slash 0 slash 42 through XE0 slash 0 slash 47. You can configure all 12 of the FC interfaces. In order to do so, it requires two separate configuration statements. For our purposes in the demonstration, we will just configure ports 0 through 5. We do this by issuing the set chassis FPC 0 pick 0 fiber channel port range 0 through 5 command. To verify that our port block is configured properly, 
we can issue the show chassis FPC zero pick zero command. We will now follow the steps for configuring a fiber channel logical interface. You will need to configure a port as an FC interface when the port connects to the F port of an FC switch. FC inter logical interface configuration includes the following steps. Explicitly specifying one or more ports as an FC family interface in NP port mode. This is a mandatory configuration step. Next, we can configure the FC interface options and port speed. And lastly, we need to configure the buffer to buffer credit state change number. These are both optional features. The buffer to buffer state change number feature prevents the loss of buffer to buffer credits between the two interfaces on either end of an FC link. The state change number determines the number of frames and receiver readies the interfaces exchange between the state change send and the state change receive used to track these transactions. If you enable the buffer to buffer state change number, the recommended setting is 8. Setting the number to 0 disables a feature. If either of the two connected FC interfaces is configured with 0, then both interfaces disable the feature. If the two connected FC interfaces have different non-zero numbers configured, both interfaces use the higher port number. For the port to transport FC traffic, you must also set the physical port as an FC port using the port range command is configured in the previous step. To configure an FC interface using the CLI, you must first specify the interface as family FC and set the port mode to NP port. Remember, this is a mandatory configuration step. We do this by issuing the set interfaces FC 0 slash 0 slash 0 unit 0 family fiber channel port mode NP port command. Next, we would configure the FC interface speed option by issuing the set interfaces FC 0 slash 0 slash 0 fiber channel options speed auto negotiation command. Then we would configure the buffer to buffer credit state change number. The most common number used here is 8. Once again, we would do this by issuing the set interfaces FC 0 slash 0 slash 0 fiber channel options buffer to buffer state change number. After configuring one or more FC interfaces, you can then assign them to an FCOE VLAN and then to the fiber channel fabric. We can then show our work by issuing the show interfaces FC 0 slash 0 slash 0 command. Success! We have now configured a physical and logical native FC interface. This concludes this learning bite. Thank you and have a great day. Visit the Juniper Education Services website to learn more about courses. View our full range of classroom, online, and e-learning courses. Learning paths, industry segment and technology specific training paths. Juniper Networks Certification Program the ultimate demonstration of your competence. And the training community, from forums to social media, join the discussion.